Oh no! <laughs> Click the right button. Chris. Good morning, everyone. Hello. Welcome to the Nursing School Show. I am Matthew. Christina. We're here to answer nursing school questions. Boom. Christina is here to answer nursing school <laughs> questions. Welcome. Thank you guys for joining us this morning. Uh, we have quite a few questions out here that we can go ahead and uh, go through. Let's do it. If ever anyone has any questions about nursing school, uh, today is just a general ask me anything. So go ahead and pop those in the comments and we will get to uh, the ones that will help as many people as possible. Again, we are here to help you get through nursing school, Boom. to feel confident in nursing school, to, and to have a life. Have a life he in nursing me school. What the topic would be today. And yes. I said, well, it's got to just be general because we have had so many questions coming in to the live videos that we have documented, kept, that we haven't gotten to yet. Because every time we do a live, we get more questions. We do. It, <laughs> so I want to make sure great. that I'm answering your questions. Yes. Uh, and apparently, an hour is not long enough. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to come up here like four hours. We'll be here from like nine. Well, I think they'll just hour. keep coming in. So these are all really, <laughs> really good questions and really great things that we can help with. So yeah, definitely mm -hmm. go ahead and um, ask your questions and we will get to them. There was one that was asked, I believe last week that I, I did like, we weren't able to get to it. So let's start off with this one. Uh, everyone else, go ahead and post you do it too. You used to make fun of me for that. Yeah, I know. On the videos. He's like, Christina, why do you always do this when you want people to comment? So now look at you. I know. I know. All I do that there. too. <laughs> 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 All right. So let's get started, shall we? Uh, question number one. <laughs> question uno, numero uno. Uh, should I continue to work part time while in nursing school? Or should I devote all my time to school? Okay, so do you work in nursing school? Tell me in the comments. Who's working in nursing school? Yeah, that is a really good question because I know that mm -hmm. your teachers told you something like when you were starting, right? Depends and on the teachers you talk it to. Depends, yes. on the, depends on the teacher as well. Yep. So uh, yeah, go ahead and pop in the comments. Um, thumbs up for currently working. Thumbs down no. <laughs> put a number one if you are oh, currently okay, working fine. a number two if you are not how's that mm, or um, just tell us using real words you, use your words <laughs> like stephanie good morning stephanie working full-time hi charlotte yes working part-time mm -hmm. great all right working part-time okay working full-time wow full-time full part-time nice mix I'm working considering quitting, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's chat about it. So when I was in nursing school, mm -hmm. we worked, I say, I always say we for me. <laughs> I worked part time. You were working. I was full working full time, but I was not in nursing school. Christina <laughs> was doing all the hard work. So yes, I was working, but I don't count because I wasn't actually in nursing school. <laughs> I was working part time. And going to nursing school and I worked part time all through nursing school until I decided to get another full time job of being pregnant. <laughs> so I worked until we got pregnant and then I left that <laughs> mm -hmm. to be pregnant <laughs> and go to nursing school because I felt like those two things were enough being pregnant in nursing school. That's enough <laughs> to do at the same time. So yeah, I worked until uh, we got pregnant and then I was pregnant and we had our baby, what, a few weeks after nursing school. So um, I have my opinions. When you get into nursing school, you will most likely hear from your instructors that you cannot work in nursing school. That is, you know, that is what you will hear. Typically that's what everyone says, you shouldn't work in nursing school. You can't work in nursing school. It's impossible to work in nursing school. It's impossible to do this or that. Basically, anybody t anytime anybody tells me that it's impossible to do something or like I can't do something, just makes me want to do it more. Like who's with me? 
you raise your hand. If someone tells you, you can't do that. You're like, watch me. <laughs> we do tend to have that uh, human nature. I'd, I'd call that human nature. <laughs> now, when someone says you can't do this, uh, you're like, there's that rebellious mm, side. That's like, mm, I'm going to try. I'm going to do it. So let's do it. Let's <laughs> go, friends. Let's go. <laughs> so I think it's totally possible, to be honest with you. Now, the thing with that, we and I actually had instructors in nursing school who said that it's totally possible to work while in nursing school because they did it. So I know I know many, many nursing students who are working in nursing school who, you know, it's totally fine. I worked part time in nursing school. It's totally doable. The thing is, though, is that if you don't have to work, you don't you know, it's totally up to you. It's not that big of a deal. You know, if you don't have to work, if you don't have to make an income in nursing school, like if your husband works, your spouse works, someone works and you're fine without working. Like, I mean, why add the extra stress? You know, like might as well just go to school and focus on school full time. But if you want to work, that's great too. It basically comes down to whatever you want to do, right? Kind of like everything else in life. Yeah. So I think this question, um, along with Charlotte, you're, you're, I, I'm going to bunch this all together. Um, uh, how do you, how do you juggle nursing school and being pregnant? Mm -hmm. Um, how do you juggle nursing school and your life? I think it's kind of the more general topic, right? So yeah, there, you can specify it to being pregnant or, uh, should I work full time and part time or should I um, go to Great Wolf Lodge or should I go on vacation <laughs> or <laughs> any anything, any everything is just competing for your time and your attention is really what it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, it really comes down to, yeah, you going through scheduling. That's a big thing too. scheduling right. your time, mm -hmm. uh, finding out how much time you have left how much time you have available and how much attention you need for each of these tasks. So you can just more practical. You can just kind of go through the exercise of uh, going through your planner, um, writing everything out, right? How much time you need studying, et cetera, et cetera. And we all have the same amount of time in a day. That's something that is constant. We all have that same amount. It's something like 24 hours. Um, so it's all the same for all of us. It's just, what do we want to use our time doing and then focus on doing that? Uh, I've talked about this, uh, probably last week or something about priorities and just what is your priority? Uh, what is your one priority and then kind of work around that. Uh, there's also the, the object lesson that I think I've heard with, with students and things like, uh, I don't know how the story exactly goes, but oh, a teacher takes a giant jug, right? And he mm -hmm. takes rocks and sand and oh, yeah. pebbles and all mm -hmm. that. And if you fill it up with uh, sand yeah. first, then you won't have any places to put the big rocks. But if you go the other way around, you put in rocks. So your most important things and then smaller pebbles and then sand and then water, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know how that story goes. I'm sure you guys have heard that. But um, that's the way that you can structure your day is just what's the most important things, put those in first and then go from there. So can I work full time? Can I work part time? Well, how much time do you have left after you put all those uh, other activities in? The big rocks. Yeah, the big rocks. How do you juggle nursing school and being pregnant? Um, those are big rocks. So those, <laughs> <laughs> those, those come. And then what else can you fit around it? And at the end of the day, something that I think a lot of people are uncomfortable with also is you have to cut. Sometimes you have to up. cut, giving things up. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. We also talk about this a lot, that uh, life is seasons. Mm -hmm. I don't really think of it really as a 50-50 balance all the time. It's more seasonal that, okay, I'm in this season, so I'm going to lean into this. So for this season, I need to cut out X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. um, if I cannot work, if, if I'm being supported elsewhere, uh, is that something that I can cut out for this season? Mm -hmm. right. So... Just all that thing, thing weighing, to get, weighing together too, I right? I think we have this culture where we're supposed to, and not supposed to, but like expected to do everything all the time, always 
always, <laughs> right? Like your the expectation <laughs> is that you can go to school full time, that you can work full time, that you can homeschool your kids full time, that you can, you know, clean your house full time, make dinner full time. You know, you're doing all the things full time. That's a lot of full time, my friends. That is a lot of full time. So, you know, there's that one thing that no one wants to say. And it's like, something's got to give. Sometimes something has to give. So, you know, working, going to nursing school, if something has to give, you can choose one, depending on your job. I think you can do both. If you don't have other things on top of it, if you're trying to take care of, like in this season right now, if you're trying to homeschool your kids, go to school full-time and work full-time, my friends, that is a lot of full-time. I don't know. Like if you can do it, fantastic. Pop it in your schedule. My planner's filled out upstairs. <laughs> there you go. Use your planner. Fill it out hour by hour. Figure out how many hours you have in a week to do the things you want to do. Put in your top priorities first, like Matthew said. And then fill in from there. So what is your top priority? If your top priority is your kids, put those in first. Put <laughs> your kids on, on your <laughs> schedule first. If your top priority is nursing school, put nursing school in first. You know, and we're not saying you love nursing school more than your kids. That's not what this is about at all. This is like seasons, right? What is this? What are you going to focus on more in this season? So if it's nursing school, do that and then fill in the gaps with everything else. That makes sense. So use your hour by hour schedule. Make sure that you are filling up your life with your top priorities first and then filling up everything else. To be honest, I don't know if I would go to nursing school in this season of life right now that we are in. As a society, I do not know if I would be willing to work full-time, go to school full-time, and homeschool my kids full-time. I did a whole YouTube video about that. I don't think that I would, to be honest with you, if I was in nursing school right now and had to homeschool my kids at home and had to work and had to go to school, um, I probably would take a step back from nursing school. Yeah. personal preference so it, it really comes down to that it is really mm -hmm. personal and what are your priorities yeah. what season of life are you in mm -hmm. right now uh 2020 has been a different kind of season for a lot of people out there so you need it's you need to judge it for yourself and what is your season what uh are your priorities priority uh to get through and yeah what what needs to give or what can give if it needs to mm -hmm. give and so. i am not saying that to sway you any which way the reason I'm saying that in this season of life if I were in nursing school right now homeschooling my kids and having to work full-time that I would most likely quit nursing school that's my personal opinion the reason I'm telling you that is because I want you to give yourself grace to make that decision for yourself if that's the right decision for you. Because what we often do is if we don't see something or someone else doing something, then we don't think it's possible for ourselves. If we don't see it, we don't think it's possible, right? If we don't have an example of it, if nobody's talking about it, then we don't even think about it, right? So I'm giving you the option, I'm giving you permission. You don't need my permission, but if you want my permission, you have it. If you need to take a step back from nursing school, if you need to take a step back from other things, give yourself grace through the whole process. Don't beat yourself up over it. You know, don't like regret your decisions later. Like we talked about last week, like Brooke Castillo says, have your own back with your decisions. You know, she also says, like your reasons like your reasons for whatever you're doing. You can do whatever you want in life, but make sure that you like your reason for doing it. So that's my two cents with that. Mm -hmm. I fully believe you can work full-time, go to school full-time, as long as those are your priorities, as long as you have clear expectations, have your priorities straight. You know, if you have a family, you've talked to your family, everyone's on board, you have your schedule laid out, you're managing your time well, you can do it, but you know, we also have to consider the season of life we're all in right now as a world 
and make sure that we are, um, you know, talking about the current situation of like all of us being at home, having to school our kids in a lot of places, um, you know, all the additional responsibilities that are not just nursing school and working. So that's my two cents for all of mm-hmm. it. Yeah. So what I, I think, I think the last point that you, you made there, have your own back. We've talked about it at, at length last week. Yeah. I think that's really important. Uh, do go a hundred percent in on your decision and be okay with your decision and have your own back and whatever your decision is, whether it is working, whether it is not working, whether it is mm-hmm. to continue nursing school, whether it's not know that as long as you've weighed everything and that is your decision, stick to it. And that's your, your choice. So yep. And, Don't and that's fine. Up. And that's, that's whatever you decide. It's okay. Mm-hmm. So absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Hello, Facebook. All right. Hi, wow. Instagram. Lots of, we lots have of a lot of questions. comments, questions coming through. Matthew so like typing. I am typing away. Uh, next question. Uh, we've so got a couple NCLEX questions. So we're just going to dive right into the NCLEX. Um, how do I crack the NCLEX? I'm struggling so bad with NCLEX style questions. Uh, I noticed SATA question is very hard for me to answer. How can I answer mm-hmm. SATA questions? So a uh, brief overview of NCLEX questions and mm-hmm. how to go about yeah. answering them. And then I guess specifically SATA. So I we'll, think we'll start with that. the um, general like test taking stuff, you have to practice test taking skills where you're, you know, go working with um, a lot of our nursing SOS members on this right now, we've had so much success in our nursing SOS membership community. You guys are rocking it. But oftentimes what we hear is that you get to an exam and you kind of freak out, right? Like it's scary to take an exam, even though you do really well on it. Oftentimes it's still scary when you sit down to take it. So In order to kind of alleviate that, what we always recommend is that you practice NCLEX style questions before you take your exam. Like we say, my, we've talked about this a lot, is that whatever environment, whatever situation you're in when you take your exam or have a skills check off or what have you, you want to kind of simulate that before you actually do it. So if you were just, you know, studying your content, following our study strategies, you know, using our nursing school study system to study, that's fantastic. But also something that we have in here that we, you know, that's one of the biggest tips in here <laughs> is to practice and collect style questions. Make sure that you practice answering them, getting familiar with not only the content of what they're asking, but how to answer them. So that is the biggest thing. Really, the thing with practice questions, you are not trying to find some, you know, magical test bank out there in the world that will have all the questions that you're going to be tested on in nursing school. No, that would be cheating. We do not do that, right? I point it out because we get that question a lot. (laughs) We get that question a lot. So no, you are not trying to find a magical test bank that has all the questions that your instructors are going to ask you during your exam. Absolutely not. The point of answering NCLEX style questions as you study is to not only get used to the content, but to understand how the questions are worded and what they are looking for in the answers. You may or may not know this, but there are a ton of nursing school exam hacks that you can use to pick the correct answer, even though you don't know what exactly what that correct answer is. We list a lot of them out here in the nursing school study system. And I will run through the, so it's on, if you have the nursing school study system, it's under test taking strategies on page 38. Uh, I will run through the SATA ones because we talk about how to, so answering SATA questions is on page 39. Um, when you answer SATA questions or the select all the, all that apply questions, these are the questions that, you know, they give you, you know, whatever question, and then you have to select all of the questions that apply or select all the answers that apply to that question. So you'll see check boxes rather than a, uh, what do they call it? A radio 
Yeah, a radio button. Radio button. I don't know why they call it a radio button, but that's what they call it. I don't it. know either. It's kind of a weird name. Yeah. Radio button or a checkbox. You will see checkboxes on the SATA question. So it'll just be like a box, not a circle. It's a box. So don't miss them. <laughs> don't miss it. It'll say select all that apply. SATA, select all that apply. That's what it'll say. Select all that apply. And you are able to choose every individual answer, like every answer that applies to that question, every correct answer on there. So these trick up a lot of students because it's all or nothing. You have to get all of them right or you get the entire question wrong. There's no partial credit. So when you are answering SATA questions or select all that apply questions, what we always recommend is that you take each answer on its individual merit. Don't combine the answers together. Take each one as individual questions and answers. So read the question, read the first answer. Is it true or false as related to the question? And if it's, you know, if it's correct as it relates to the question, then you select that one and then move on to the second answer. Read the question, read the second answer, and then do the same thing. Is it true or false as it relates to the question? And select it if it's correct. Does that make sense? So you're taking them all individually and you're answering them as true or false as they relate to the question. So for set of questions, if there's that question and then four options, uh, really in your mind, think, think about it like four different questions, just four different questions. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I, I like what Christina said is read it over again after you go through each, each, um, yeah. each one. So they're just really four or how many choices there are. That's that many. It's that many true false questions. So read a question. First one, true, false. Okay. Then read it and then go again. And right. then again. So yeah, this really acts like multiple questions of true, false is really all that is. Yeah, so. absolutely. Prima Bella and Clex mastery app and you world is life <laughs> for <laughs> NCLEX out questions. Yeah, I really like the NCLEX Mastery app. That's what I use through nursing school. Love them. Charlotte, listen up. This advice is gold. <laughs> You're awesome, Charlotte. Thank you very much. I'm glad it was helpful. Yes, that's a questions. Answer them as true or false. Take every single one on their individual merit. And like I said, it's on page 39 in the nursing school study system. So go, test taking strategies, the high level answers to this, how, how can I crack the NCLEX practice, 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 yes. and just get into the habit of seeing those kind of questions. Cause yeah, they are worded differently. There's different kinds. So lots and lots of practice. Uh, Stephanie, I'm struggling so bad with NCLEX style questions. That's fine. Cause they're new. So mm -hmm. just lots of practice, practice, practice will get you more used to it. Um, so you, you can answer them. And then, uh, yeah, and SATA questions is what we went through. So Absolutely. really, really important. I've heard, I've heard that the NCLEX is kind of a big deal. So, <laughs> uh, let me see. Ready to move on? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Angela, uh, still st struggling with knowing what is important when reading. Uh, she did also mention I have severe ADHD and then added something here that um, I've heard about, but not in context of nursing school, actually. I, I keep hearing about a note taker for students in my situation. Is this true? And I'm guessing that's specific to your school, whether they offer that note as taker, a... what's that? Uh, it's like a third person that comes in and takes notes for you. Is, is that correct? Oh, is what, yeah. Mm -hmm. My aunt, actually at a community college, not, not nursing school related, but at a community college, um, she is a volunteer that does that for... Uh, students that need it so she comes in and takes notes for that student so mm -hmm. i'm not sure i did that in college you did that in college yeah. as well okay yeah. Yeah. yeah so is that what they consider like a note taker a note taker so that, was, that was my assumption so An angela students. is that what they were saying and is that what that is uh and i think it's do all schools offer this or i have no idea yeah so definitely I have no idea take a look into it i think that it probably be a good idea yeah that makes um, sense the only i haven't heard it in the situation of adhd or add i mm -hmm. have heard it in the situation of a deaf or hard of he hearing student who that is who i would take notes for in college mm -hmm. um so yeah i i took notes and would um you know give them my notes you know you kind of you how did i do i think we like typed it out or something and then i gave it to them okay so yeah i was a i was an official note taker mm -hmm. for some students in Oh, that's cool. College. 
Yeah. But I completely that. forgot yeah. about that because that was actually not in nursing school. That was mm -hmm. before nursing school. And I just want to point out how cool. awesome our community is uh, in the comments as well, that we just got uh, more, more answers from Naya. Uh, that sounds really, Hi, really great. Uh, Angela, it depends on your school. Most schools, to my knowledge, have uh, accommodations. There should be a disability service place that you can mm -hmm. go talk to. Um, and then just a follow up there. Um, helping out a friend. You need to you need a diagnosis and proof uh, of the need for accommodation from a doctor explaining why. So that's interesting. So, yeah, I'd say just check with your school on the policies and procedures and go about seeing how you can do that. But that sounds yeah. like an awesome option. Absolutely. Uh, as far as if, if you need a little bit more help there. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I know for undergrad and other schools are recording, but I'm not sure how that yeah, works I with mean, some schools with recording as well. Yeah, if, if your nursing school allows you to record classes, record lecture, that would be amazing. A little bit different now in the online environment. Yeah. Can you record? I mean, record a Zoom <laughs> class? I don't know. I mean, it's a little bit different now. Your school might actually, like your instructors might even actually be recording their PowerPoints or something. So you do already have the recording. Maybe. It's a saved yeah. file on your computer, right? On that PowerPoint. Um, but, you know, I would definitely check with your school, see if you can record class. Yeah, Angela, my school does not offer, but yes, that is what I'm looking for. So, um, yeah, recordings Angela, or something like that. Mm -hmm. see if your teachers um, have a data bank of it or something that they're doing. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, Brandy, my professor records zooms and uploads them for us. Perfect. So if that's an option too. That's great. Uh, yeah. Just try thinking outside the box and seeing what, what are different ways of trying to um, get that information. Yeah, for sure. Even if your school does not like, if you want a, a note taker, is that what we're calling? Like, it's actually like a position, like a know. volunteer position. Yeah. Is that what it's called? I'd imagine like note taker um, that helps take notes for you if you have a disability. Even if your school doesn't have that, uh, you know, set up particularly, you can absolutely get with other students in your class and do the same thing. We've talked about this a lot uh, using Google Docs, like Google, um, mm -hmm. Google Drive, like the Google... It's like Google Doc, right? Yeah. Like, like yep. Google Dr Drive or Google, um, like the Google, the Word, <laughs> Word Doc on Google, Google Doc. And then everyone in your small group, clinical group, study group, what have you, can all go and write in their notes in that one Google Doc and you all have all the notes, which is so great. Yeah. So it helps you not miss anything in class. That's really good uh, tip too is, yeah, just small groups and, mm -hmm. and really talk to other students, your friends in, in class too. Yeah. And uh, do you guys hear different things or different parts of things? So definitely a more holistic approach is exactly that, uh, kind of uh, do study partners and things like that. So mm -hmm. that would that would help too. Uh, going funny. back to struggling what to what is important when reading, we've we've talked about this a lot. So you can just hit that really quick then too. Yeah, we always recommend that you focus on studying the sections of the book that your professors talk about in class. That is the most important thing that your instructors want you to know is what they talk about in class. And they either wrote your exam or they know what's on your exam. So whatever they say, that is what we recommend, whatever they say in class, whatever they talk about on their PowerPoints or their lectures or the study aids they give you, your study guides or what have you, that is what you are going to want to study from the textbook. Focus on studying the things that your professors talk about in class. Really as easy as that. It really is. We have a whole playlist on study tips. Do mm -hmm. we have that link I don't, for on YouTube? Uh, probably. We have maybe, a whole playlist on how to how study. How to study. Hey, I actually have that. Matthew's so going to put it that. in the YouTube chat. We cannot, with our setup right now, I can't post links in the Facebook or Instagram chat. Sorry, guys. But if you go to YouTube, type in Nursing SOS, like search Nursing SOS on YouTube, and then find our playlists. There's a whole, it's a full series on how to study in nursing school. By the way, if you're on YouTube, 
hit that like button. Hit subscribe. Hit subscribe. For those just joining, we're doing go. we're the nursing school show. Christina and Matthew, we're talking nursing school. Ask us anything. Ask us anything. There you go. Anything. And thank you guys so much so. for how many thousands of subscribers now on YouTube? I don't I don't know. We have quite a few. Someone tell me. 50 plus. 50 plus thousand subscribers is, on YouTube. Which is kind of fun. So thank you, thank you guys all for that. You're amazing. Uh, if you guys like what you're hearing, go ahead and hit subscribe and hit the bell. Hit the bell. There and you go. those hit on buttons, Facebook, Facebook and Instagram. Instagram. Welcome to. And Hello. thanks for joining. Brandy, I did not forget about you. Next up, uh, she has her first clinical rotation tonight. Sweet. Excited and scared, which I'd say is appropriate. So yeah, that sounds right. congrats. First clinical rotation tonight. Uh, what can you expect? Where are you at, Brandy? Where? Long-term care. Mm. It's typically the first one. That's my guess. Okay, so for clinical... When you start clinical, so this is your first clinical ever, ever. Exciting. I mean, you don't know what you don't know. I remember my first clinical. That was very scary. Like we talked about last week, I would always go before, like go the night before to know where I'm going to park and like what floor I need to go to and all these things like where I need to go. <laughs> so, you know kind of takes a little bit of stress out if you at least have like you can control the things that you can control right Ooh, acute make care. sure acute care uh make sure you know where you need to go where you need to park all the places so i don't know brandy how your instructor is doing it i kind of hope that they are giving you more of a get to know the place day you said that Typically, you had like a little scavenger hunt we right? had scavenger hunts Yes, in nursing school, they would do scavenger hunts for us. So we would have to go find, like, you know, where the crash cart is, where's the linen closet, and, you know, all these things, like, you know, where's the Pixis, and where is everything on the floor? Just to get used to the setup, you know, get used to where everything is. And then also we would, you know, the first day, if I remember correctly, if memory serves... We more, it was like shadowing, more shadowing the nurse, you know, doing light things, depending on what term you're in. Brandy, are you in like your first term of nursing school or are you more advanced and this is just your starting clinical for this new term? Tell me. Because if it's like, if you've been in nursing school for a little while now, if you're in like your med surge rotation, you've done clinicals already, you, you know, you're you have clinical experience already, or you at least have lecture knowledge, then your first day on the floor might be, you know, you're helping out the nurse doing, you know, some basic things, you know, doing your assessments, you know, helping, helping with, you know, whatever they need, depending on the floor you're on. Brain, you said it's first semester. So you're probably most likely going to shadow a nurse and not really do a whole lot. Right. Because right now you don't really know how to assess the patient. You don't really know how to give meds. You don't know how to, you know, do, well, really do most of the skills that you would do in an acute care floor. So you'll get there. But now, like, don't worry too much about it, because my guess is, is that you're just going to be attached to a nurse the whole time mm -hmm. and they're going to show you their ropes. I'd say Super fun. We, we talked about this last week. Uh, really make the most out of it. Ask mm -hmm. questions, be really open yep. uh, to absorbing as much knowledge as possible. Just go out there and, uh, yeah, show that you are a learner and that mm -hmm. you want to learn. You want to learn all the things. So uh, ask ask questions. Get out there. Volunteer. Volunteer to be the first. The guinea pig. What have <laughs> you. Uh, just get out there. As long as it's within your scope of practice, Brandy, if you are first semester, make sure that any anyone who is in fundamentals first semester, something or other, um, make sure that you know your school's policy on skills and what skills you can do at clinical. Uh, so where we are, we had to check, like my school, we had to check off on our skills in the skills lab before we were able to do them at clinical. And so just make sure that you're aware of those things, uh, what you can and cannot do at clinical. Mm -hmm. uh, Brandy, that's fine with me. <laughs> we have to do a head to toe assignment on our patient at some point. Yeah, head to toe assessment mm -hmm. 
on your patient. Uh, yes, I remember that taking me multiple days. I remember her practicing on me. <laughs> Fun times. There you go. <laughs> Guinea pig. There you go. Guinea pig. Yeah. Find somebody that you can practice on. Yeah. When I was my first, like very first clinical, like I said, you just don't know. You don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. Don't know what you don't know. Francesca. Yep. I did my first Foley miss and then got it right. And then, and then got it and then got it. Sweet. I, sorry. I can't hard to read. Hi, but, Francesca. Hello. Awesome. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, autocorrect. I know, right? <laughs> Assessment. Some of those nursing terms. Uh, yeah, so it, I remember my head-to-toe assessment taking me the entire day, multiple days, to do on one patient. <laughs> and we were there for like seven hours. So it's like we're talking like 10 hours to do a head-to-toe assessment because I would go in there. I had my whole list of questions and, you know, it's a, you, you, you don't you just don't know what questions to ask and then you forget things so i would like go to the room and write write things down because i couldn't remember it all of course and then have to go back in ask more questions go back out and write things down and go back you know back and forth and back and forth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is rough that first term friends give yourself grace that's, it's gonna be that's fine. really important. It's yep. no big deal. We've all been You're there. You're all there to learn. So learn. <laughs> like, I, I, guess. Just, <laughs> I like giving my experience because I think oftentimes when we get to nursing school, it's like you just, you don't know what you don't know. And everyone expects you to know all of the things. Or you feel like everyone expects you to know all the things. A like lot, it, I'd say that a lot of that might be feelings. It's but, feelings. Yeah. It's feeling like, oh, all my instructors want me to be able to do, you know, critically think and do all these skills and all this stuff. And like, no, let's slow our roll, friends. <laughs> slow the roll. That's a phrase, right? People still say that. Slow your roll. Yeah. I liked saying that. Back okay. In the day. I, I, I'd hope that it, it's still. <laughs> That's still a thing, right? I can still say that. Yeah. <laughs> Slow your roll. Yep. So yeah, just be open and it's clinical. It's your first day. So. Yep. Let us know how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Brandy, on on let Wednesday. Us know on join Wednesday. us. Join us again on Wednesday and tell us how it went. So that'll be that'll mm -hmm. be fun. Yep. Uh, all right. Next. Next. Uh, I pulled a Christina go, go. and spilled some stuff. Do we have anything <laughs> I over here? I pulled a Christina. Where's our... Mm. Oh, there you go. That here. works. Have that works. Tissue. Thank you. Hopefully the keyboard still works. We'll How see. often we'll find out. do I spill coffee on myself on these live so, Ask Me Anything shows? Oh, a lot. It's drying. And Matthew just pulled a Christina. Maybe your questions won't have the letter B anymore. <laughs> but you're fine. You're okay. All right. Uh. You're okay. It's fine. It's right. Everything's fine. <laughs> no big deal. All right. All right. So, uh, Sarah, welcome. You actually asked a question on Facebook and then jumped on your YouTube and asked it there too. So hey, awesome. There you go. That's the way to do it. Um, it is a pre-nursing question. So uh, okay. just throw that out there. Uh, I'm pre-nursing. They suggest they. I, is it a capital like they or who's they? But uh, they, <laughs> they suggested that home health aid is better than doing farm tech or how does it work? Like, do you do pre-nursing then go straight into the nursing mm. program or whatnot? Um, so who is this now? This is Sarah. Sarah. It's right there. Hello, Sarah. So I mean, you could do either or. I knew nursing students who were home. okay well it kind of depends on what state you are in because here we don't home health aid I guess we do kind of have we do have those I think but most of what who we hire here in where we are is um like nursing assistants like certified certified nursing assistant CNAs um so home health aids can mean different things in different places so I'm assuming it's kind of similar, maybe just not a certified position. So you could do that. But I also knew nursing students who did pharmacy tech before nursing school, which is kind of cool because you know a lot of the meds going into nursing school, which is gold. So I, I mean, you could do either or, I would say. Um, 
the CNA or home health aid, depending on what your position is and what you're doing, that will get you more comfortable working with patients in more of a nursing situation than a pharmacy tech would. Again, is it, is it required? Maybe not for your school. I mean, some schools do require you to have some experience. I know, um, you know, a lot of them actually in this area now do require a certain number of hours as something in the health industry, maybe something. I don't even entirely know how they do it, but usually I think it's like a CNA position or a tech position, um, like a hospital tech or something like that. Um, but maybe pharmacy counts for that. Just check your, check your school. Check your school. Make sure you're aware of the requirements for your school. And you know, is one better than the other? Honestly, my personal prefer my personal like opinion almost says it's a wash because for pharmacy tech, you're gonna get the meds, which are huge, huge deal. And then as a CNA or a health aide, you're gonna get more of that one-on-one -on -one total care experience that will help you as a nurse. Okay. So it you, so, you benef know. benefits both ways. The, is one better than the other? Uh, maybe it depends on what you're more comfortable with or not as comfortable with, yeah. and then do the one that you're not as comfortable with. So you get comfortable with it um, before you get to do more of it in nursing school. So yeah, yeah I'd say that. Yeah. In, in like the most common thing to do is the CNA. Hmm. That's the most common thing to do or CNA or like health aid or like where you're, you know, helping patients with total care, basically. That's the most common thing. Uh, we don't often hear pharmacy techs then go into nursing school because normally like pharmacy techs from would go to go like to pharmacy pharmacy. school. Yeah. yeah. Pharmacy school. Um, but not always. So just make sure that you check with your school. Like I said, we had students in our nursing program when I went to nursing school who were pharmacy techs and then they rocked pharmacology. Like, man, do they know their meds? <laughs> so, I mean, really, <laughs> I, I think it's great. I think that would be great. Mm -hmm. Cool. Honestly, I think it's up to you. Check with your school and see what requirements they require. Yeah. See what requirements they require. <laughs> Charlotte <laughs> threw up a question. What shoes do you recommend? <laughs> Ones that fit what on your feet. What shoes do I recommend? Ones that fit on um, your feet. So I use, I should actually have them down here. I think I had a, we had a link to them in the Amazon shop at some point. Maybe they're still. I'm not sure if we do. They anymore. are Allegria mm -hmm. Paloma, I believe is what they are called. The Is that the actual like style? That's the shoe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Allegria is the brand. Mm -hmm. Paloma is the like a style. Something whatnot. Yeah. Charlotte for clinicals. They are white. They are white. Shoes. You also have a black pair, but I don't think you use those for clinical. You I just, did not use them. You I, just walked around with those because you like them so much. I so. really like those shoes. And so I did buy them and I have black ones and I have white ones for clinical. Um, yeah, the white ones for clinical because you know, all nursing schools require that. Who knows why? But mm -hmm. they are all white. White socks. So yeah, Allegria. You, know? <laughs> you, you went. Allegria Paloma. Yeah. Oh, you definitely studied up on the different kinds that you would you were looking into. I and tried a lot you of different tried shoes. a lot of them. I tried like you know what do you try like New Balance and like Dance Reeboks Go is and a... Dance Goes. I tried Dance Goes the clogs. The thing about Dance Goes that I didn't like was that your foot kind of pops out. Which oh I didn't yeah, like. yeah. The Allegria Paloma ones have a strap on the top, which is pretty great. What That's about why I liked it. what about Crocs? Mm, Crocs. Crocs. I, I I don't think Charlotte, <laughs> you're talking about the traditional Crocs with the holes in it. <laughs> that doesn't sound safe. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure Charlotte, you're not talking about those. But just for everyone else, just to clarify, when you are in nursing, <laughs> in nursing school with holes in them, <laughs> please know. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Make sure that, that your toes are fully, that your feet are like fully covered at least. <laughs> and that you're not going to get whatever 
soaking through your shoes <laughs> and yeah. socks. You do not want that. <laughs> no. All right. Is that the shoe question? Yeah, that was, was the, that, that was, was the, the shoe question. Okay, <laughs> Allegria Paloma shoes. I think it's called Paloma. I don't yeah. know. Someone look it up and tell me. Allegria. I. Oh, Paloma. Yeah, so that's the one that fit you. I think in general, yeah, definitely shoes are important for mm -hmm. nurses, nursing students. So you guys are on your feet a lot. So um, I would suggest, yeah, trying out different kinds. If if you if there's a shoe store out there that you can go on and actually try them on so that you can actually figure it out yep. which one would work best for you yep um everyone's feet is different are different is different. everyone's feet is different yes everyone's feet are different They're, yes yeah so try them out go to a shoe store if you can find one that's open nowadays <laughs> and try things <laughs> awesome there you go uh what do we got my friends exams what do we got prima bella hello Threw out a question how do how to study for ati proctored exams while studying for course exams mm, prima bella i was thinking about you this weekend i hope you're doing well you guys know that i think about you i do i'm like ah, i hope they're doing good I hope they're doing all right i hope they're doing good <laughs> hope to see them on monday all right how to study for ati proctored exams while, while studying, studying for, for the course, course exam. So I'm guessing that it's that wow that is kind of that the yeah. key sticking point there. This can be tough because um, if your school uses ATI, you will oftentimes have those lecture exams that your instructors write or another instructor wrote or something like that. And then you have your ATI ones. The thing about it is though, is that you will be surprised at how close the content relates. Like what we always say, nursing is nursing is nursing. Nursing school content is nursing school content is nursing school content. Like what you learn on, you know, our nursing SOS membership community is going to be very similar to what you learn in nursing school, which is very similar to what you learn, you know, in your ATI book or what have you. Like it's all, you know, nursing content is nursing content is nursing content. It's not like the pathophysiology of heart failure is different from one, <laughs> but it shouldn't be from one source to another right so it's all it's gonna be i i want you to think of it as you are studying for your ati exam as you are studying for your lecture exams so as you're taking your lecture exams through the term just remember that you're also helping to be helping yourself be more successful on your ATI exam because the more content you learn, the better you're going to do on that ATI exam. Does that make sense, my friend? I will note though that on the ATI exam, those questions, the ATI questions, I've heard my school uses HESI, mm -hmm. but ATI similar, challenging, very, very challenging. So make sure that you take the practice test, even though there's a lot of questions. I know, I know friends, I've heard it. You don't even know how many times. Christina, I don't want to do the practice questions. I just want to study other things. I'm like, no, do the practice questions. If you have access to an online ATI module, online resources at all, practice questions, do them. Do them. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot say it anymore. So I think I'm allowed to say this just because I'm not an instructor. <laughs> I'm not an official instructor at a school. I'm not affiliated with any university out there in the world, which I think gives me a little more leeway to say things. Yeah, sure. Go for it. So, <laughs> just throw it out there. You... <laughs> see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if someone's going to fire me, it's going to be that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so... ATI, here's something that I have heard from students. Don't tell anybody because I don't know if I'm supposed to say this. But ATI practice questions, what I have heard from students is that the practice test that you do online, a lot of the questions show up on your exam. Hmm. I don't know why. Ah. But I have heard that from students. It's and the I, same test bank. I know. Well, that's the thing. It's like <laughs> ATI is a test bank. And so what I'm thinking is that if you go online to do your practice questions, they're using the same test bank because you take in your nursing school test. So I've heard this is just, just, just rumor. It's just what I heard. 
Like no guarantee that's going to happen to you, but in the same way, <laughs> make sure you do the practice questions. So I'm gonna... I, I'd say I'll tack on to that. Make sure to do the practice <laughs> questions, lots of practice questions to get used to it and to go through test bank and get comfortable with that information. Mm -hmm. um, whether or not it actually appears or not, that's kind of beside the point. You still want to do the test questions. Absolutely. A side note to that side note, if you do see a question on the actual ATI that looks like the one in the <laughs> practice, make sure to still follow all our steps, yes. and read the whole question, because not nursing, but in my certification, they have test questions too. Mm -hmm. And they did put very, very, very similar questions in the actual certification, but it's the opposite answer. Yes. So it's the exact same, except one one thing is off the same exact choices it looks exactly the same but because of one word it's now the opposite so yeah, or slightly different slightly different so yeah regardless of what you do be sure mm -hmm. to still follow the te the the test taking tips read the entire question etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah so and we are not saying friends that like we always say like the point of practicing and click style questions is not to find some magical test bank out there that your instructor draws questions from. That would be cheating. We don't do that here. The thing about ATI is that you're supposed to do the practice questions. Like when you are in an ATI program, like your instructors are telling you, you need to do the practice questions, right? <laughs> like do the practice questions and then you go take your test. Yeah. So that is not cheating. ATI, you have like your online modules and stuff, like do the practice questions because you're supposed to do the practice questions. It just happenstance that sometimes some of those may show up on your exam is what I've heard. <laughs> but like Matthew said, be very careful. Yep. Read the full question because they might Bear. try to trick you up. <laughs> this is golden. Yeah. You guys are amazing. Thank you for all you do. Thank you, Prima Bella. I hope you had a good weekend. Like I said, I was thinking about you over the weekend. I hope you're doing good, friend. All right, what's next? All right, Let's next one. Uh, I have a question. Oh, I'm you reading. have a question? I don't have a question. <laughs> I'm reading question? that I have a question. Uh, what do you do if you felt like you were, that you feel like you're struggling or falling behind in nursing class? And I wanted to touch on this because it was just asked not too long ago, but I think the, one of the key words there is the feeling. So mm -hmm. I have a question. What do you do if you feel like you're struggling or falling behind in nursing class? Because... We talk about this a lot on our channel is, is feelings and mindset work and all of that. And really that feeling could be two things. It could be true or false. <laughs> yeah. Right. So it really, that feeling could be true, in which case you'll want to find out the underlying cause of that feeling mm -hmm. and fix that or um, study or do what you, you must. But it might also just be completely false and that that's just stress or anxiety or whatnot, just playing mind tricks and really you're doing great and there's nothing to do. Yep. So want to jam on that a little bit. What would you do if you feel like you're struggling or falling behind in a nursing class? Totally what Matthew just said. If you are feeling like you are falling behind or struggling in a nursing class, you really have to really have to take stock on that and make sure that you've got your thoughts under control. Because here's what happens. This is nausea. Here's what happens, nausea. Oftentimes, life. if we get overwhelmed or stressed or anxious, Oftentimes we are not focused, we're not efficient, we're not productive. And in nursing school, you have to be all three of those things, right? Focused, efficient, productive. To study in nursing school, to pass your exams, to keep moving forward. But when we feel like we are not going to pass or we're gonna fail, or we feel like we can't do anything right, or you know, we're overwhelmed or we're burned out or all of those things, then if that's how we feel, are you going to be productive, focused, and efficient? No, not 
as much as you would have been if you were, you know, clear headed and not stressed, not anxious, all of those things. Right. So it's really, really important in nursing school that we keep the faith, keep the belief that we can still pass. Keep the faith, keep the belief that you can pass the next exam, that you can pass the term, that you can become an amazing nurse. Keep that faith. Because if you lose that and you genuinely don't believe that you can pass, then that's where you're going to go through that cycle of self-sabotage where you don't believe you can pass. You don't study for your next exam, so you fail your next exam. Then you don't believe you can pass, so you don't study for your next exam, then you fail your next exam, right? Because if you don't study, you're just going to fail your next exam. Don't study, fail your exams. Don't study, fail your exam. But if you believe that you can pass and you keep moving forward, keep pushing yourself, keep stepping outside your comfort zone, keep putting in the work, keep studying, stay focused, keep going and don't quit on yourself. And you have a much better chance of passing your exam and therefore passing the term and passing nursing school, right? You see how that works? It's very tricky. It is very tricky. And yeah, it, a lot of that goes into whether it will be a virtuous cycle or a destructive cycle. Ooh, virtuous. I know, right? Those are those are big terms. I just want to throw them in, but because uh, they, they sounded really cool. Uh, but yeah, whether you're caught up in a, a good mindset or really a bad mindset. So I think the the first step too is yeah that where is it, if you can really dig into that feeling. Where is mm -hmm. that feeling coming from? What is the evidence that you are getting that feeling from? Uh, did you do badly on exam or this is this is an experience that we were talking about last week. Did you take an exam? You thought you did fine, but then you started talking to your classmates and now you're getting all psyched up because at that point, that's that's beyond your control. So really, you want to see where where that feeling is coming from and whether it is, quote unquote, true or not and what you need to do. Uh, is it coming from that you uh, weren't able to study as much as you thought you needed to? Well, we'll see what happens when test comes back or whatnot. So right. just dig into those those feelings and and err on the side of grace, giving yourself grace and err on the side of that more positive cycle rather than um, getting into a, a loop of feeling bad. Mm -hmm. so. Don't beat yourself up. Yeah. Don't beat yourself up over it. Yeah. Just do your best. Study your best. Keep going. <laughs> so I was like, that gets me every time. What did someone say? Uh, I think it was last week or a couple of weeks ago. Uh, their motto is just keep swimming. Which just is, keep swimming. Which is great. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. That should be our nursing school motto. We should put that. Just on keep a, swimming. We yeah. should put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> nursing school motto. Just keep swimming. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so true. You know, it's so true. Naja, I'm glad that that helped. Uh, let's circle back around on this question from earlier because it it it, hmm. it touches on it a little bit. So uh, what do you guys do to stay motivated to be full on on about nursing? Uh, and then what about when other interests compete? And we, we talked about this a little bit about life being seasonal mm -hmm. and what season are you in? So everyone in nursing school, your season is nursing school, or at least that's a big part of it that this time around. So um, what the, the follow up question is, yeah, how do you guys stay motivated about being full on about nursing? And what do you do about your other interests? And it's also about um, making sure that you know why you're doing it. And that you you know that it's temporary, but it's not but nursing school is not going to last forever, right? This is not your life for the next 80 years. It's not, nursing school is not permanent. This is just a season, like Matthew said. Then you, you get to go and work and do different things. Mm -hmm. You know, nursing school is just a season. For instance, for us, you guys know we take every Saturday off. So our cycle is kind of like six days seventh day take it off every week mm -hmm. it's kind of nice to be honest with you because it's like okay i can do anything for six days seventh day 
nothing, <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's family day. So it's interesting because, yeah, this comment says, uh, stay motivated about being full on about nursing. And really, mm -hmm. it's it comes down to those definitions. So when you were in nursing school, you were full on nursing school. Yeah. But we still had our cycle of six days, you're going to be full on. And then one day we're going to take it off. Mm -hmm. And you need to find that cycle, whatever that cycle is with you and, and build in that rest time. It really is important, uh, however long that is or when that is or whatnot. Uh, we'll leave that up to you. But really, there's been a lot of research just even about sleeping, right? Oh, I'm not going to sleep. I'll just study all night. Well, we know now that that just doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, you need rest. Your brain needs rest to recuperate. And w we find that out with, with our cycle of six days and then seventh day of just, you know what? We're going to do family time. Yep. So absolutely. Uh, how do you guys stay motivated about being full on about nursing school? Be full about nurse, be full on about nursing school, be in that season, but also build in those things. We mentioned, we started off this, this conversation about planner, plan out your day, mm -hmm. plan out uh, all your times, organize everything and see where all the stuff falls and whether things need to be cut to make room for rest if needed Absolutely. even so how do you stay motivated and the other big thing yeah what's your why why are you doing it mm -hmm. why are you doing it be be fully committed to that why and be committed to yourself and we mentioned this before having your own back mm -hmm. so having your own back that this is what your decision is this is what i'm doing so i'm going to be 100 percent in doing it when i need to be absolutely uh, when other interests compete well it's all about time. It's mm -hmm. all about time. What we mentioned earlier. So build in all those other interests. We're not saying we're here to make you feel confident and to have a life too. Yeah. So be more efficient in studying and doing things. So you have the time to build in other interests that you want to do. Right. That's complete. That's totally fine. Uh, just because you're in nursing school doesn't mean you can't have a life and that all you need to do 100% of the time is no sleeping, no other things, no family, nothing, just nursing. That, that just... Yeah, that doesn't not, work. That doesn't work. That does yeah, not you work. You have to sleep. You have to take care of yourself. You have to so. see your family, you know. Got to do those things. So we work nursing school into other, like we said, priorities, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Sleeping <laughs> is a big one. Sleeping is fun. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> uh, reading books, right. whatnot, whatever you can do to rest your brain sometimes yep. is needed. So sweet. All right, my friends. We'll see you on Wednesday. Wednesday. If you want a free critical thinking cheat sheet, go to nursingschoolofsuccess.com forward slash critical thinking. I yeah, wanted to mention it? that there earlier, but I have forgot. We have a whole, it's a free cheat sheet for you through nursing school that walks you through how to critically think. Check that out. Matthew just posted the link on the YouTube chat. But if you go to nursingschoolofsuccess.com forward slash critical thinking, you can get it there. Alrighty, we will see you on on Wednesday at nine Pacific, Wednesday. noon Eastern. Brandy, join us then. Tell us how your clinical is. Yeah, sweet. I'm so stoked. All right, see you guys later. Take care. Bye bye. Bye.